Number One Cochrane Sports Showdown is brought to you by Number One Cochrane. Go one better. And by Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield. Have a greater hand in your health. Welcome back. Some people say blowouts are easier to take than blown losses like what we saw yesterday with Penn State. So Indiana is in a situation where they had no chance really. Just in case you didn't see it, 21-20, uh, Penn State led, 147 left, first and 10 from Indiana's 14-yard line. They can get a first down, then take three knees. They can do anything they want and keep the ball away. Instead, Devin Ford gets the call. He goes into the end zone because Indiana said, go ahead, we want the ball. So, Rich, this to me is as terrible a thing you can do as a head coach. Now, I don't know if he didn't get the message yet, young kid, or it wasn't delivered. Whatever the case, it cannot happen. How bad was this? It was pretty bad, and I like the fact that you're starting with the only non-Penn State guy on this panel tonight. Um, I, look, need a, is, I wanted to make sure it was evenly matched, you know. This so. is the one, uh, one of the worst coaching decisions, I guess. you got to blame him a little bit, but he, he said that the, the players knew about it. But here's the deal. They're up eight. Well, no matter what, this is supposed to be a top 10 team, right? Indiana stinks. Stop it. Just stop them, right? Stop but they should never have even gotten a chance. I understand that. <laughs> Uh, players should be more aware, and that's on the coaches. This is almost as bad as, you know, Pat Narduzzi refusing to go for it on fourth down against Penn State. It's pretty close. These guys should know the situation. They had more than enough time to explain it, and it didn't happen, and Penn State lost. Now, it's controversial because we don't know if they even got the two-point conversion either. I think uh, some of these sports books are giving money back. Yeah, he did. Listen, he I didn't get in. That, now, that, of that, course, that was, of course, coming from it. a Penn State guy, he didn't get it. No, it's <laughs> true no, though. He no, didn't. It, it should never come to that. Go ahead, Chris. It shouldn't have come to that. You're absolutely right. It should not. That should not have been. They shouldn't have been in overtime, and Indiana should not have gotten the ball back at the end of the fourth quarter. Uh, I hate to crush Devin Ford for it, uh, but it's it's on every guy in that huddle to be reminded 13 times before the ball is snapped. Hey, just don't score. Fall down at the one yard line. You saw it happen today with Todd Gurley in Atlanta. Don't go into the end zone. I don't care how many times, how many people have to repeat it. So you repeat it to him so that he doesn't do that. But then to fall to pieces and let Indiana walk down the field, score a touchdown, score the two, and then it, score the touchdown in the two in overtime as well. It's just, it's <laughs> a terrible way to start the season. Were I a Penn State fan, this would enrage me because <laughs> James Franklin gets really good recruiting classes and then is just... I'm not going to say a wretched game day coach. He's had a ton of success. He's a damn side better than Pat Narduzzi at Pitt, but he has way too many blunders like this. It's on the player, yeah, it's on all the guys in the huddle, but at the college level, I'm sorry. It is always on the guy making millions of dollars coaching on the sideline when a screw-up like this happens. Just inexcusable, terrible job by Franklin. Yeah, I agree. There's no other. You have to start at the top. He's the guy in charge. And he's the guy who deserves the blame. And that should have been a win. Now they have Ohio State coming up next week. We'll be back with more right here on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown.